Hey everyone, it's Nicole from KenHub and welcome to our tutorial on craniovertebral ligaments. In this video, we'll be looking at the ligaments that help to support the connection of our skull to our vertebrae. In this video, we're going to be looking at bones associated with the craniovertebral ligaments, the ligaments themselves, and we'll finish off with some clinical correlations. So let's start by looking at this image and identifying the bones that we're interested in. And we're looking at a posterior aspect of the axial skeleton. Beginning with the superior aspect, we can see the skull or the cranium. And next we come across the vertebral column or spine, which can be divided into five sections. The cervical vertebrae, which are highlighted in green here, the thoracic vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae, the sacrum, and finally the coccyx. Attached to the thoracic vertebrae are the ribs, and attached to the sacrum are the bones that make up the pelvis. So since we're looking at the cranial vertebral ligaments, our focus is going to be on the superior aspect of the vertebral column, where the cervical vertebrae meet the cranium. Now let's have a closer look at the seven cervical vertebrae that we can see highlighted in green on this image here, but note that it's the first two that we are particularly interested in today. So as well as being called C1 and C2, each of these vertebrae have a more special or specific name because they're quite different from the rest of the vertebrae. So the first cervical vertebrae is called the atlas. And we can see it here as the most superior cervical vertebrae. The atlas took its name from the Greek name Atlas, which refers to a titan in Greek mythology condemned to hold up the earth for eternity. So we can say that the vertebra atlas has the same fate as the first cervical vertebra supports the globe of the head. C2's other name is the axis, and the axis is just inferior to the atlas just here. And these names, atlas and axis, are what are used when defining joints between these bones and the other ones that they articulate with. So let's first have a look at the third to sixth cervical vertebrae. These vertebrae all have very similar features to each other and are more typical vertebrae. So we'll look at them first, and then we'll see how the atlas and the axis compare. So here we're looking at a typical cervical vertebra from a superior view. And the inferior aspect, which is at the top part of the image, is where we can find the vertebral body. The bodies of the cervical vertebrae are relatively small, leaving room for this large foramen called the vertebral foramen. And when all of the vertebrae are stacked on top of each other as they are in our bodies, these foramen all together form a continuous tube called the vertebral canal. And this canal is what allows for the protected passage of our spinal cord. And the posterior aspect helping to form the vertebral foramen is the vertebral arch. And protruding off the arch is the short spinous process, which is bifid in shape. Laterally, we have the transverse processes, and within each of these, we have a transverse foramen. The transverse foramina are specific to cervical vertebrae and allow for passage of the vertebral artery. The pieces of bone that we see here are the pedicles, and the parts that we see posteriorly between the transverse processes and the spinous process are the laminae. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at KenHub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.